every day I think, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this story? What purpose does it have? And whenever I go to do a story now, I write on the top, I'm like, I ask myself, what am I going to achieve? Like, what is it for? What does it mean? What is it going to gain? And I will pick some themes and I will write across the top in big freaking red letters because otherwise you forget. You're like, why am I doing this? Am I just being self-interested? What is the point? And I think that might be either personal, like me evolving, or because it is a sharp thing and I realise I'm in a privileged position and every single story that I do needs to matter so that, you know, places like the Herald continue to pay people like me to do my job. So the, the, the sort of yeah. metaphor that yeah. I have in my head about what's been going on, it's like um, somebody ran into a building to... Uh, ran into a burning building to save someone and didn't make it out. And the media is sort of going, well, it's very honourable and very noble and very courageous that they did this thing, but really... They should have known that, you know, running into a burning building was a terrible idea. And, and they should have ran faster, you know? If I was doing it, I would have been able to run faster and I would have been able to get out. And it's that, that real sort of ethical judgment is there. That ethical judgment is like, oh, ultimately, Materia was, was a courageous person, that this was a good thing. But let's look at the political management. Let's look at the spin and look at how badly she did in that area. And to really just focus on that one side, but to not make that ethical judgment, even though it's just sitting there. Yeah, I, 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 I hear what you're saying, Keith. Um, although your metaphor... We practiced probably, this last night. Pro probably not quite perfect, given, you know, Materia is now engulfed in flames. And sort of asking, <laughs> should she have run into a burning building? Well, in hindsight, no. But I, mean, I think the, the question about this being reduced to sort of game-playing political management, I think it's a fair one. A, a, a lot of the pundit commentary coming out is written by, you know, senior long-serving gallery types who watch a lot of this. However, that's not to discount the fact that political management is vitally important. Holding your shit together is an important part of being in government. Would you give up David Bowie if it meant Trump not being elected to the most powerful job in the world? Oh. I reckon David would take that one for the team, actually. Very good political journalists are now political comms professionals. No. Oh, yeah, a couple of people have rung me from search firms and, and asked, um, asked me uh, to do stuff like that, but um, no, I haven't been tempted. Right. Do you think you'd be any good at it? I don't know. Um, I'd probably leak terribly. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, I've... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. it's like, wow, you should hear about this. <laughs> I've always wondered what it would be like to be in the, um, you know, working for a minister. You get given the cabinet papers and you're like, oh, Liam, oh, Corin, oh, Duncan, <laughs> Paddy, you, you know. Um, so, yeah, yeah, anyone who watches this won't hire me now, will it they? It was just before the, just after the earthquake, the first earthquake, um, and I found myself kind of stuck in Christchurch. So originally I had moved there for one year, which was 2008, um, to do a residency? To do the Un University of Canterbury Writer-in-Residence. Right. Um, which is the best job I've ever had because they pay you a salary and give you an office and you, all you have to do is write a novel. Um, and what novel did you write? I wrote Magpie Hall. Right. Yeah. Um, and then circumstances kind of conspired to keep me there for a few years. Um, and then the earthquakes happened and I decided that if I was going to stay because I had to stay because my house was a little bit damaged, um, then I wanted to do something that was going to improve the city somehow. Um, so I joined the board of the Writers' Festival. Um, and the first one we had after the earthquake was in a tent in Hagley Park in 2012. And it was in, I don't know if anyone ever saw it, it was, it was, the, it was a big dome. Um, and the writers that came that year dubbed it the Pleasure Dome. Uh, Let me knock bit. this on the head right now. I'm not a Chardonnay socialist like this guy over here. I realised I've been way too tribal. I was way too tribal. And because I didn't need to engage that much with other competitors and others um, in the media, I didn't. And ever since, and all the people we've encountered since, I realised how that wasn't the right approach. And so now I'm trying. Uh, to do that and to well, you engage. Think you're enjoying it. Yeah. Well, there's <laughs> another um, reason here, Russell, that no one's touched on. I mean, do you ever wonder though, because because you are one of the the loudest voices on TV culture, so you're constantly invited to attend these ridiculous TV events. You also went to a plastic surgery one recently. Mm. Um, do you ever wonder that the establishment that you're sort of trying to rail against, that you're trying to critique? have accepted you too much? 
I would like to take it out of it, knowing that I you're going to come to their event and then write about how ridiculous the people are. I don't know. I think it's just like this weird thing between they're like, any publicity is good publicity. And I'm yeah. like, I'm not sure if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and I went back to my editors and I said, look, uh, you should publish it, but you should say that Labour is saying this and the statisticians are saying that it's not true. Um, and I didn't think the editors wanted to publish that. It was kind of like a really pivotal moment for me working in a New Zealand newsroom because that's kind of when I realised that things don't have to be true to be published. Um, when like our elected representatives profess to not know what neoliberalism is, I find that a little bit disturbing. Come on, you just, you know what it means. You're just trying to like play to the peanut gallery. Come on, man. Point out that you managed Patrick Gower, who I think has editorialised more than any other political editor in history. Well, no one manages Patrick. So. It was the end of the night, and I was mixing two songs together. I was beat matching two songs together, which is complex. You know, you've got to use your brain to do it. And some dude just kind of comes into the DJ booth, and it was on the same level as the dance floor, so everyone could just kind of walk in. And he comes behind me, and I'm like, "What the hell is he doing?" And then next thing, he gropes me, top and bottom, and uh, and, I'm, and I'm just like, oh god! Like, and then train wreck. Everyone leaves the dance floor. So that's a bad feeling. Number one, that happened. Number two, I turn around, start yelling at him, and then he drops his guts in the DJ booth. That's the worst. Yeah, that was pretty horrendous. I'm sorry that you had to go through that. And then security came over and got rid of him. But it was, yeah, it was not nice. And then there was no dance floor. I was like, wicked. <laughs> what a, and then I had to walk to my car by myself. So where do you stand legally at the moment? Can you update us on the current state? We are not currently facing any lawsuits in a court of law. Um, so we got Sue. <laughs> David. Yay! <laughs> This may not remain the case. I'm pretty frank about it. We're not going to get our liberation from these political uh, 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 infrastructure and system. This isn't where we're going to get it. Question for Chris Bishop. Has he ever considered that he is in the wrong political party? <laughs> I have been asked that before. What we've got to be very aware of and cognizant of is it is the Pacific that is going to pay the price very shortly. And we've got islands in the Pacific, and we're going, we must prepare as a city, as the biggest Pacific city in the world, we must prepare for climate refugees rather than do what has happened and send them all back home and wait for Kiribati to sink. So I think we as a city have to show that open compassion. We are a wealthy nation. The Pacific is responsible for 0.1% of gas emissions. Highly developed countries like New Zealand, the States, Canada, the rest of it, they're responsible for the bulk of it. We've got to do better to making sure we reach out to our Pacific neighbours in the first instance to welcome them into Auckland to start with because they're going to be climate refugees. Yeah.